Большое спасибо. I guess we'll start with uh, three presentations about um, cancer burden in Russia. I'll speak English because I don't think we have many <laughs> participants from Russia <laughs> at the moment. But I think they're waiting to get their beach. <clears throat> and I hope in the next half an hour we'll, we'll see more people. Um, so... Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. So this uh, overview of my presentation, this is going to be really short. It's based on my uh, on our work. Uh, it's a part of my PhD and it's uh, one of the papers. It's, uh, it's about economic losses and to be more exact, productivity losses uh, 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 related, to, related to cancer mortality in Russia. So. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what about economic? <clears throat> so, what what's the research question? We are talking about economic losses. Um, it's 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 important part of cost effectiveness analysis, and um, we can see cost effectiveness analysis from two perspectives. And one the one is healthcare perspective, where we discuss uh, mostly. Uh, cost within uh, like the healthcare sector but also we can look at the societal perspective which means we should take into account not only medical but also non-medical costs and if we talk more about costs uh, back so we have medical costs there's no medical cost but we have b both direct and indirect costs if we're talking about the medical direct cost case of course drugs procedures etc uh, we also have some direct non-medical costs when patients have to pay to travel to hospital, for example. And uh, we also have indirect medical costs. Uh, for example, we save life with new treatment, or, but uh, at the same time, this patient has to uh, get, for example, other treatment for other diseases, he stays alive. These are the costs which... Uh, uh, appear in the life years gained. And finally, we have non-medical indirect costs. And this is the productivity costs. And this is uh, actually was the research question of our study. There were a few several studies about the productivity costs and overall costs of cancer. Uh, for example, this one was for Europe, for European Union. And it was about, uh, if we talk about overall costs, it was about uh, 126 billion euro. But if we were talking about the productivity costs, it was a huge, uh, also uh, lost economy. It was about 42 billion. Uh, and it was sometimes more than 1% of GDP. If we're talking about overall costs, but it was also uh, uh, a proportion of GDP if we talk about productivity losses. Um, another study, and uh, this was published in 2015, and it's uh, um, was also uh, evaluating productivity losses in Europe, but uh, good to mention that uh, these, if we talk about different cancer types, the structure of those losses is quite different in different countries. And for example, uh, from this study, we know that in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, productivity losses associated with um, uh, cervical cancer deaths and, for example, also oral and pharyngeal cancer deaths uh, is quite high compared to, for example, Northern Europe, Western Europe or Southern Europe. Uh, another study, uh, which was also published last year by also co-author of our work, Alison Pierce, it's a study about the productivity losses in BRICS countries. Uh, in huge economies in uh, South Africa, Brazil, uh, India, China, and Russia. Uh, it was a cross-sectional study, and, uh, and uh, also it's Oh, okay. 
So it was uh, showing the total costs and costs uh, per one death. Um, you can see quite different. And also here we come to to discuss the methods of those studies. Uh, uh, <clears throat> also the structure was a bit different and you can see also here cervical cancer again and for example uh, uh, it's, uh, it was the losses uh, were quite high in South Africa and maybe the next speaker uh, Professor Bile will tell us what's going on with cervical cancer with cancer burden in Russia but uh, why it's quite sometimes similar to South Africa uh, Oh, okay. So, the aim of this study was to evaluate um, first to assess mortality trends, then uh, quantify years of life lost, and then calculate productivity losses and try to project this up to 2030. So this was the idea of the study and we used human capital approach, which is quite simple approach where you uh, you think uh, you see the economic output of individual as an as its wage rate. So if somebody dies uh, uh, due to cancer, for example, uh, so it's uh, uh, all all those money which were lost to economy. Uh, is actually uh, the same as the wage rate that person probably could earn. So, and I think okay. So we we got our the our data from uh, Federal State Statistics Service. We also used the well-known uh, methods to predict cancer mortality rates. Uh, and we calculated years of life lost based on life expectancy and overall mortality. Uh, and like we also uh, took all the economic data from also federal state statistics. This were the labor force participation rates, uh, average annual earnings and inflation rates. And uh, also we, uh, we had some sensitive analysis based on the retirement age. Uh, we converted everything in US dollars and uh, we, we tried to uh, interpolate all the all the data to have some smooth uh, estimates. Uh, and we also got GDP in order to see what, what, what would be the proportion of uh, 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 productivity losses uh, based on the estimate of GDP. Uh, first, uh, and these are the results of the study. First, the uh, mortality, mortality trends and we can see that fortunately for most cancer types the mortality is going down as predicted to be uh, uh, declining uh, except several cancer types and uh, to mention this is cervical cancer oops sorry cervical cancer also liparal cavity and pharynx cancers and prostate cancer pancreatic cancer so uh, this is based on this is cancer mortality uh, not the incidence at the same time this is also will be told I think in the next presentation for, for example stomach cancer which is uh, the mortality is declining as well as lung cancer uh, so we estimated the uh, total overall losses and it was quite a huge amount of money uh, both for men and women, it was higher for men, and it was, of course, because the mortality in men is uh, much higher than in women. But still, it was about, for example, in the uh, most recent period, it was about five billion, and uh, it still predicted to be that high in men and about three um, billion in women. 
so overall about 8 billion. Uh, <clears throat> what we also did, we, we uh, uh, decided to see what, what are the productivity losses uh, per one cancer death. Um, it's also quite uh, well, uh, you can explain this graph. The the uh, the younger the patient, the cancer patient dies, the higher are the productivity losses. So uh, uh, we can see. Uh, first thing is like for most cancer types, it's uh, the productivity loss is going to be stable more or less. Uh, uh, productivity losses also are connected with, uh, of, of course, the wage rate, so the, the economy. But also we can see for some cancer types it's clearly quite different from the other ones. Again, uh, cervical cancer, which is, which is going up, of course, only in women. Uh, and also lip or on pharynx, pharynx, it's also going up. And its trend is quite different from other cancer types. Uh, if we see what's going to happen in the next 15 years, uh, what, what are the difference in losses? We'll see that for cervical cancer, the difference uh, is like it's the highest. Uh, it's in women and in men, and we were surprised to see that it's liparol and pharyngeal cancers. It's going to be uh, okay. It's in Russian now, but it's the predicted change in in overall losses in men. And at the same time, we see like. Uh, different trend for lung cancer, for stomach cancer, for more traditional cancers, which we had in Russia. And this is another graph uh, which shows the relative, both relative and uh, absolute difference, uh, predicted difference in productivity losses. And we see that again, cervical cancer is uh, a bit of outlier, both in terms of relative and absolute. Uh, changes in productivity losses. And again, we were surprised to see that lip oral and pharyngeal cancer is, uh, looks like, like cervical cancer in, 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 in women, the same as we can say about pharyngeal cancer, pharyngeal cancer in men. But the, of course, the, like the, the most productivity losses are connected with lung cancer, and this is the uh, size of the circle and it's lung cancer in men and breast cancer in women. Uh, so what are the conclusions? Uh, productivity losses uh, due to premature mortality are quite high. It's about what, 8 billion per year. Uh, the losses are expected to drop uh, and this is mostly due to decline in mortality. That's a good, that's good news. Uh, but if we, we don't have uh, actually the data on overall cancer costs in Russia, but if we do some approximations and we, we can think about about 20 billion per year. Um, and this is about 1% of GDP, by the way. Uh, and yes, the losses are highest for breast cancer and lung cancer in women, but uh, Relative growth in productivity losses and also absolute growth was highest for HPV-related cancer, and this is uh, should be, I think, highlighted, and uh, um, that's why we chose the topic of all our session devoted to this uh, new, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, like, causes of cancer in Russia, which uh, we. Uh, we discussed today. So we have, of course, there are a few limitations to our study. Human capital approach is not the only approach to uh, estimate productivity losses. There's the other one, friction costs approach, but you need more data to perform this analysis. And actually, in that case, the productivity losses would be much lower. But again, it's something to discuss. We, we, we never had medical costs, and this is maybe the next step of, uh, for our study. And again, losses due to morbidity, we assessed only the losses due to mortality. Uh, and this is like, I would like to thank people who participated in this. Uh, this paper is going to be published, I think, in the next month or so. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone. I think the most of the people are sitting in the audience. That's 
was great. <laughs> uh, and thank you.